So, the first thing I'm going to do is ask you guys to write your name on the piece of paper and fold it in front of your table so that I can see your name, so that I know who I'm addressing. I know most of you anyway. No? In big, please. Yeah. In big characters. Jay, perfect. Look at that, standing perfect, yeah? <laughs> Good stuff. Right, for those of you that don't already know me, my name is Julian Mason. Uh, I teach self-protection in uh, the UK and I started doing that in Europe as well. And uh, today, we're going to speak about situational awareness. But before we do that, really what I'd like to do is a bit of housekeeping, letting you know that the kitchen facilities are over there. As you know, you already got yourself a brew. The toilets are over there. Just in case anything happens, it shouldn't, but if it does, the fire exit is that way as well, through the toilet. Yeah. If anything happens, there is a first aid kit here, right behind me, and there are some fire extinguishers here and there. Okay, so that is Basic, basic housekeeping, okay? Now the next thing that I would like to speak about is the, are the ground rules. So I expect everyone to respect each other. I, I expect everyone to think about, you know, diversity and equality. Can somebody remind me the nine characteristic of diversity and equality? Age. Age, okay. J. Uh, gender. Gender, that's correct. Religion. Religion, Religion that's correct. Uh, Pete, uh, a, 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 a protected characteristic, one of the nine that haven't been said already. They're written over there. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> uh, I'll go for marital status. All right, good. Okay, so basically what I'm trying to say is that there are a lot of different people out here. We all have different religions, cultures, and probably even difference of opinion. Please respect each other's opinion, even if you don't agree with them. That way we can be in a positive learning environment. You're right with that? Is everyone all right with that? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. So, let me turn the page. So, today's objective. Really what I would like today, I would like you to understand and being able to explain what situational awareness is. And I'd like you to be able to explain to me what I'm going to show you. So the color codes and the UDA look, which are two modules in order for you to improve your situational awareness and your decision making. <clears throat> okay, so let's just get started here. So every student has a pen and a paper. You can take notes as well if you want. Yeah, which I'm going to give you some. You could actually use that piece of paper here and write at the back of it for you to take notes. Okay, so that's for that. So I'm going to start with the, with the presentation now. I'm probably going to switch the light off if that's okay. Yeah, so that it's better for the projector. Everyone all right? Nobody's afraid of the dark? Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. No chance in my house. Okay, let's have a look. Let's just start with this. Do -do 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 -do. Come on, mouse, work. Okay. Well, we've got technical difficulties. It happens, but don't worry. That's going to be sorted very, very fast. Okay. So, the title of today's lesson, really, Situational Awareness, Environmental Map and Decision Making. So what this is, it's learning to read the environmental map around you. So basically, being aware of what's happening around you, of your environment, okay? The moving objects, the people walking, the everything. The birds, the dog shit, everything should be scanned before it gets in your personal space so that you have the time to react if this is a threat, okay? 
All of you work in security, so this is going to be relevant to your work and hopefully you're going to enjoy it and that's going to serve you in your work. Okay? Because the best form of self-protection is situational awareness. See it first, don't be there, avoid and escape, de-escalate, or worst case scenario, deal with it. Yeah? So, who can tell me what is situational awareness? I'd like to have a, a short couple of sentence answer for that from everyone. You're starting with you, Pete. Just being alert to what's going on around you. Yeah. Things that could happen. Yeah. And things that have happened. Yeah, so absolutely. You just have to basically just got to keep your eyes open. Remember stuff that you've, you've seen in the past. Yeah. And use it on yeah. a split second. It's mad. It's hard to do it when you have to leave work, but you have to do it. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So that is one thing. What about you, uh, Radhastar? How would you how would you describe what situational awareness is? Add maybe something that he hasn't said. Um, he hasn't said the same words, but the same the same as simply it is to avoid problems or bad situations that yeah. hurt me before mm -hmm. it started. Absolutely, yes, that's good. That's <coughs> good. Jay, how would you would you be able to say something that hasn't add something that hasn't been said already about situational awareness? Well, basically, it's forward planning. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. To, um, when it comes to dealing with different situations that might arise or has arise, yeah. so it's basically um, learning from past experiences as well. Yeah, absolutely. Past situations as well, mm -hmm. how to put that forward in terms of improving yep. um, a situation that you find yourself in. Yeah, good, good. Dominic, <laughs> hey, you've, been, you've been in the trade for a long time, so it should be easy for you. I've got one. <laughs> uh, basically, it's uh, being aware of your surroundings, uh, being aware of individuals that can cause harm, uh, being proactive with situations rather than reactive, yeah. uh, using uh, dynamic risk assessments. Absolutely. So yeah. you're always scanning your area, you're always looking for things that could cause problems, hazards, yeah. danger, that sort of stuff. Uh, and like Jay said, forward thinking, uh, instead of waiting for it, you know, be prepared, <clears throat> not living in fear, mm -hmm. but, but being prepared for yeah. what the yeah. possibilities could be. So there are other words that we could use. We could use healthy paranoia. Yeah, there's uh, somebody that I heard saying that, Russell Jarmesti, that uh, teaches, uh, I think it's somewhere in Wigan, uh, that's been a dormant as well for a long time, and he's calling it uh, healthy paranoia. Okay, <laughs> well, you should never mistake paranoia with uh, awareness, these are very, two very different things. And as Don said, action always beats reaction. Okay, action is when you see things first and you have the time to react uh, proactively, I mean, the time to act proactively. When you react is when you didn't have the time to see what was happening, you turn around and shit, the, the, the situation is already there in your personal space and now you have to react to it. So, you know, action always beats reaction. Now, if I ask one of you to take your phone out and do a Google search for me and search situational awareness and uh, read to me out loud what he finds. Anyone, anyone, it's up to you. Who picks up the phone <coughs> fastest? I've got on my phone, so it can't be me. <laughs> it's gonna be Jay, I think. <coughs> yeah, the one who, first one, first one, first one wins. Wikipedia's got a uh, good definition. Yeah, it says situation awareness is the perception of. A bit louder, please. please. Situation awareness is the perception of environmental elements and events which, re with respect to time and or space, the comprehension of their meaning and the project projection of their future status. Yes, so that's that is a pretty good definition of what situational awareness is. 
Now you got different types of awareness. Yes. Don't. Yes, in this novel here, I found that might be a little bit more simpler. Situational well, awareness can be defined simpler as knowing what is going on around us, yeah. or more technically, as the perception of the elements in the environment within a volume of time and space, the comprehension of their meaning and projection of their status in the near future, which is a little bit yeah. like Jay's, but uh, yeah. a little bit of an add -on. Okay, well, that's good, that's good. So when we speak about awareness, there are really there are three different types of awarenesses, but we're going to focus on mainly on this one today. Just for you to know, so you got environmental awareness, you got self-awareness, and you have situational awareness. I'm not going to go into what environmental awareness or self-awareness are too much, but this is what we're looking at today. Self-awareness is really knowing who you are, what you're, what you're capable of, what you're doing, what your mindset is, are you ready to deal with a, with a problem when the problem arises, that sort of thing. And knowing what, your, 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 what you can do, really, basically. Yeah? So, let's just move on to the, the next slide. What we're going to speak about today, we're going to have a look at Colonel Jeff Cooper's color code. Okay? So Colonel Jeff Cooper was a colonel in uh, the American Army who was uh, very popular for his, uh, for his color codes and his uh, combative, pistol combative uh, courses. So this is really, these are conditions. What's a, what's a pistol combative course? What's the pistol combative course? Well basically that was, uh, you know, he was in the army so he was basically using this module, the color code, to, uh, to as, as as an awareness mode for the pistol course. Okay. okay. So when to be there and scanning your environment and if you see a potential threat, access your weapon and scan and that sort of thing. Very simple stuff. Okay. He's also the one that created the, the Mozambique drill. If you've seen my video not long ago, I was doing a Mozambique drill with a firearm where you got the fence here and you're here and and when you when you decide you're there, you access and you pick and you you shoot two shots to the center mass and one shot to the head, come back, scan, and put the gun away. That sort of thing. He's the one, he's the inventor, he's the grandfather of that sort of thing. Yeah? But we're not mainly, we're not going to speak about combative, pistol combative today. We're really going to focus on the situational awareness aspect of things. Yeah? So, <clears throat> this is what we're going to look at. Okay? A bit more about uh, Colonel Jeff, Jeff Cooper. That's something that he said that I really like. If you find yourself in a fair fight, your tactic sucks. <laughs> yeah? Which means that, you know, if you're in a fair fight, then you know, you're not thinking straight. If you want to win a fight, you're not going to make it fair. Yeah? Right. Now, we start with the main, the main colors, okay? We're going to add some to that, but we start with the main colors. You can take notes if you want, okay? Condition white is what I would call oblivious. That's when you're completely oblivious to your surrounding. Very often, when you are in condition white is when you are in your bed, sleeping in dreamland, you got no reason to worry, your doors are locked, your windows are locked, you're with your family, and you allow yourself to completely uh, relax and chill. This is called white, okay? Condition white is when you're the most vulnerable as well. So, you know, like in gangster movies and things like that, and even in reality, you know, if people want to get you, they'll get you at night when you're sleeping, when you expect it the less, okay? That's condition white. So, examples of people being in condition white could be somebody texting on his phone while he's outside, and you see a lot of people like that, eyes in their phone, looking down, walking, not looking where they're going, yeah. Could be people with their earphones on, listening to music, looking at their phone, updating their Facebook status, <coughs> got absolutely no idea of what's happening around them, and they're more likely to be selected as a victim. Because what predators do, they select their victim, they observe too. You know, predators, they know about this shit, more or less, they know it instinctively. So they observe who is aware, who is not. The guy that's looking down at his phone with big headphones on mm -hmm. and walking like that is much more likely to be selected as a target than the guy who's got a good periphery, head on shoulders, 
and walk in with a confident body language. Yeah, do you agree? So this is for condition white. Condition yellow is more of a relaxed and prepared and aware state of consciousness. Okay, this is what you should be all the time. You should always be on code yellow. And especially for us in our job, in the type of job that we do, because we work in security, some of you are doormen, some of you do the, you know, the football matches, we do all different types of things, we're in the security industry, so we're always observing, we always need to observe what people are doing, especially before people get in our personal space, yeah? So I'm always looking at people, I'm always looking at the hands, what their hands are doing, can I see their hands? You know, if I see somebody walking towards me like this, are you going to allow me walking towards you? If you can't see my hands, I've got a hand in my back. Something wrong in there, yeah? Another thing that I could have a look at. Weapon printing, weapon signature. Okay, I always look for clips sticking out of pockets, which could indicate that the guy's got maybe a, a folder blade, or a tactical pen, or a tactical flashlight. Okay, that sort of thing. And it could be a knife as well. And I'm looking as well for weapon printing around the belt. So if somebody had a gun here and you know how to look for that sort of thing, you're going to be able to see that. It's called weapon printing or weapon signature. It could be at the back. What does that tell you? If you see a clip on the right pocket, what does that tell you about the person? He's right-handed. He's right-handed. Right yeah. If you see it on the left, what does that tell you? He's left-handed. Yeah. So that gives you already some sort of information about the person. Yeah. 80% of the population are right-handed. So if you see a right-handed person that has got a weapon, he will have it accessible, easy access. The front, or the side, or the back, or the pocket. Yeah? Sometimes people even have neck, uh, necklace knives, okay? that sort of thing. I mean, I, you, you can find a razor blade in dreadlocks. I mean, I've seen all sorts of shit. You, you work the doors, you know. I've seen it all at festivals, you see it everywhere. Yeah. Festivals, everywhere. Yeah. yeah, they hide it. They, they, they're thinking these people are innovative. Yeah? So, this is for code yellow. There is another code yellow that I'm going to speak about that is not here, but I'm going to speak about because it's relevant for you guys, okay? It is what we call code yellow alpha. Now, code yellow alpha is different than code yellow. Code yellow is a relaxed state of awareness where you are calmly scanning your environment for unusual behavior, okay? Code yellow alpha is you're actively scanning your environment for potential threats. Which means that now it's not, you're not thinking about, you're thinking on the top of that, you're, you're scanning your environment. Now you're not thinking about anything else than scanning your environment for unusual behavior and potential threat. So when you look at the police driving their car slowly and looking around, they're looking for something. They're on code yellow alpha. When you work in security, <laughs> On the doors or something, you should always be. I'm not thinking. If I work the doors, I'm not thinking. I'm always looking. I'm looking at, like I say, hands. I'm looking for clips. I'm looking for weapons. I'm looking at facial expressions. Uh, if somebody's got a big jacket, see, uh, see some people work the door and they look at that guy that it's a Jim Gordon. He's fucking big and you can see his six pack through his t shirt and everybody's like, fucking hell, that big lad, yeah? And they let the guy with a, the, the skinny guy with a big jacket on pass. Well, who's, the mo who's the most dangerous, potentially? If somebody was hiding a weapon, I promise you that the big guy, you would see it if he had a weapon. But the little skinny guy with a big jacket on, he could have a weapon stuck in his jacket. So it's all about that sort of thing. Actively scanning your environment for potential threat. This is called Yellow Alpha. This is good for police officers. This is good for military. This is good for you guys, security, okay? MI5, all these people, okay? So you really need to be uh, from going up and down from yellow, moving in through yellow to orange to yellow throughout the evening until you actually maybe get a cold red at some point. Well, I'm, I'm going to get to that, but basically what it is, is that you should always, if you're working that sort of job, I, I'd say that ideally you should always be called yellow alpha. Leave your thoughts at home for the night if you're working because you could make a mistake you could let somebody pass with a weapon you could let somebody get in your personal space you never know what what could happen so code yellow alpha all the time i know myself that's the type of personality that i have even when i go out i'm always between code yellow and code yellow alpha yeah so this is for code yellow alpha now code orange as you can read specifically identify interest focus and threat ready to act and wargaming possible reactions. 
So basically what it means is that code orange is you spotted a potential threat. You don't know if it's a threat, but it might be a threat, okay? Because something, your, your instinct is triggered and you should always trust your instinct. So code orange, you're now thinking about what you have in terms of options. Can you avoid it? Can you escape? Can you run away? Is there anything around you that you can use as a weapon momentarily? If you're in a country that allows you to legally carry a weapon, can you access your weapon? Do you have the time to do that? That sort of thing. So Code Orange is really thinking what you have in terms of game plan and options. Okay? Usually Code Orange happens really, really fast. If you've got, you got a good condition yellow and condition yellow alpha, you will have more time in this condition orange. But if you do not have enough time, if you're not yellow or yellow alpha enough in terms of condition, then the code orange is going to happen really, really fast and it's going to go from code yellow alpha, orange, red straight away. And code red is, as you can see here, action time, you're on high alert actively engaged in emergency response so basically code red means that you spotted a threat and now you know it's it's a threat so when it was called orange you thought it was a potential threat so you kept observing and now boom it's on you know it's on it's not a threat it's not a potential threat anymore it's actually happening right in front of you and now you have to do something so this is this is an action now you are engaged on the threat yeah not too bored, Jay, you okay? I'm researching that. Um. All right, cool. <laughs> Smart lad, sorry. So, condition black. Condition black is something, it's a state of consciousness. All these are states of consciousness, as I'm going to explain in a bit. Okay, they all correspond to a certain heart rate and certain brain waves as well. So, cut black is when you are panicked, frozen, in shock, breakdown of mental and physical performance. Which means that this is what we call, you know, when we speak about the free F, fight, flight, or freeze. You've seen well, your ass, basically. Eh? You've seen your ass, basically. Ah, absolutely. You never want to find yourself in there. Because if you're in there and somebody's coming at you with a blade, you're not moving, you're getting stabbed, you're dying. If your family is with you, they're next. So you need to think about that sort of thing. What's happening in Cod Black is, is, you know, your cognitive skills, your cognitive functions are gone. You can't do anything, you're petrified. Some people can't even breathe. They go, <gasps> and they can't, they can't even breathe up. Yeah? Starting with panic attacks and stuff. Absolutely. And then the heart goes, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll let you know about all this. <coughs> well, well, this is a short introduction to what the color codes are, and now we're going to break them down really more in detail, okay? <clears throat> we start with condition white, okay? Condition white correspond to a normal heart rate okay what is a normal heart rate depending on people okay some people that are very fit their heartbeat is going to go slower people that are less fit their heartbeat is going to go a bit faster but generally speaking the normal heart rate when you're asleep is below 60 beats per minute okay so as i said to you you're at home you're sleeping you're not aware of anything okay this is condition white. It's very slow brain waves as well. I'm not going to speak too much about brain waves, but you know the heart rates correspond also to a certain type of brain waves. Okay, uh, you learn about brain waves if you know about you know uh, self hypnosis and hypnosis that you got. You know you got different brain waves. You got alpha, beta, you know theta, and um, the more relaxed you are, the slower your brain waves are and the slower your heart rate is. Okay? So this is for cod white. <clears throat> now cod yellow is when you are awake. You are in the city. You are walking. You're calmly scanning your environment for potential threat and unusual behavior. It's not your main point of focus at that point because it's only cod yellow. So you're, maybe your wife sent you for a shopping and you're thinking, oh, right, what did she tell me? I need to get some milk, I need to get some bread, I need to get this. So, so you're thinking about your own things, yeah? But you're calmly scanning your environment. It's a, it's a lifestyle, it's, it's, it's a habit, okay? Even if you think about your shopping, you're still using all your senses. How many senses have we got? Uh, 
Five, I'd say even six, maybe even more, okay? We were taught that we have five senses. I think that we have more, and we sh it's about time we learn to use these, okay? So you got the touch, you got sight. the sight, you got smell. the smell, taste. the taste, what else? Yeah? We got a sixth sense, which I call instinct, okay? Something that we're not really taught to use, okay? <coughs> but when you're on code yellow or code yellow alpha, you train, you learn to use all these senses. So if I'm walking in the street, I'm going to look far, I'm going to have a good peripheral field of vision. I'm going to scan anything that is about to come in my personal space. Be it a bird flying, be it a mom pushing her baby on a pram, or it could be a bus, it could be a car, it could be a dog shit that I'm going to avoid because I don't want to step in it. Could be anything. This is really part of situational awareness. Okay? Use all your senses all the time. And if you hear somebody running behind you, for example, you're walking and you hear somebody run, you're gonna use your earring. So you're gonna start looking what's happening before they get in your personal space. It's not being paranoid, it's just being aware of your environment. I wanna know who's gonna get in my personal space before they do. Okay? That's for code yellow. On there, there is no code yellow alpha. I added it, okay? When uh, Jeff Cooper did the, the, the color code, he didn't add the code yellow alpha, but it's been later added by some other self-protection uh, instructors, okay? Condition orange. So I'll give you an example. You're walking in the streets, and uh, you know, if you're street smart, you're not gonna be walking at three o'clock in the morning in a dark street on your own, okay? That's being street smart. But then again, you never know, you know, for work, if you're working the doors and you're not driving, you might have to walk uh, quite late at night back home or, you know, at least to go and get a bus or a taxi, yeah? So let's say you're walking and you see two or three guys sitting on the corner of a, of a wall, maybe drinking beer, smoking, they're talking and you can see from their body language that they are quite agitated, okay? They're playing, they may be like doing stuff, you know, you can see that they're drunk and agitated. Maybe even possibly under the influence of narcotics and drugs. Yeah? At that point, you were switched on and aware, and you look at them, and one of them pops his head up and sees you arriving. You're too far to hear what they're saying, but you see his body language. He's popping his head up and he sees you. His head turns towards his friends, they communicate and all of a sudden all the heads turn and they're all looking at you. What does that mean? He's just told them that you're there. He's just spoke about you. Look, there is a guy coming. Okay. So that's your first cue. It's a potential cue. Maybe, maybe they you know maybe they need something, but you know, you always need to be aware of that stuff and you need to be prepared. So now already you're on condition orange. You switch from condition yellow to yellow alpha to orange because now you know that they've been talking about you. So now you think about what you have in terms of options, yeah? You see here, I'm parked over there and they're here. So I'm gonna have to pass them to get to where my car is further there. But because I'm street smart and I'm on code orange and I'm thinking about what I have in terms of option, I'm gonna take the next right so that I can take the next left and then the next left again in order to avoid them. This is called avoidance, okay? This is a very good form of self-protection. See first, avoid it. Okay, so you're in code orange, yeah? This is what's happening. Now let's say, as you keep, as you take the right, okay? Just before you're about to take the right, you give a last glance, a last look at them to make sure that they're not following you. And all of a sudden, you see that they're now standing up and they're looking at you and they start walking in your direction, all three of them. What does that tell you? They're coming to you. They're coming to you. Yeah. So now it's not a potential threat anymore. It's there's definitely it's something happening. It's not a potential threat. It's, it's threat. not a potential threat anymore. And now you have your instinct tells you, I don't want these people come next to come near me because they look drunk. They look uh, under the influence of drugs. I look at the way that they're dressed. They're dressed quite combatively. They got big bombers, maybe uh, army trousers, skin heads. I'm looking. I'm reading the body language as well. I'm looking at the way that they're walking, their kinetic energy and everything. And that, all this is telling me that I don't want to let these people near me. So now I went from code orange to code red. Yeah? Now I wanted to say, I forgot something, sorry guys. If we go back to code orange, 
code orange, heart rate elevated. Okay, so now we are going above 90 beats per second, per, uh, per minute, sorry. 90 beats per minute, 90 beats per second, fucking hell, yeah, that's a lot of coffee. <laughs> 90 beats per minute. Now what happens at 90 beats per minute, we start losing cognitive functions. What does that mean? I give you, kick, yeah. say again, the yeah, adrenaline will yeah. kick in. What is adrenaline? Can somebody explain to me what adrenaline is? Chemical compound in the brain. Yes, the adrenaline is a biochemical compound or cocktail that is prepared by the amygdala and that is fired, released into your body. Okay, so it's the alert. Okay. Getting you ready to have a fight, basically. Yeah, yeah. And the adrenaline is here to help you. You know, yeah. you need to understand how adrenaline works, what it is, when it kicks in, where it kicks in, why it kicks in, what are the, the effects and how you can use it to your advantage. And what happens when it stops? And what happens when it stops? You're going to have an adrenaline crash, no yeah. matter what. Adrenaline dump to yeah. adrenaline crash, and that's where we slowly go into cold black. Yeah? So, you know, Dom, we've worked the door for a long time, you must know adrenaline, you know? Yeah, it's uh, the body's natural response to a situation of fight, flight, or possibly freeze, mm -hmm. which you mentioned was called black, which is no use to anybody. Yeah. Uh, if you freeze. So, th this is that above 90 beats per minute, not per second. Right. Mm -hmm. Now we're going here, code red, okay? So, as I said to you, now these guys are walking towards you. You took the next right, you had the last look, and now these guys are coming towards you. So now it's on. Now that now that you, you obscured and they can't see you, now you start fucking running. Yeah? Because you don't want them. And they're probably running after you as well because now you can't see them as well. Yeah? So now your heart rate goes from 115 to 145 beats per minute. What is happening? What are the, the main effects of adrenaline? Decrease of the peripheral field of vision, tunnel vision. Okay, that's one thing. Hyperventilation, okay? The heart, as the heart goes, yeah, it requires more, more energy. So the blood will, you know, flow away from the extremities in order to feed the heart, the lungs, okay? So that you can run more efficiently. Your brain's making that choice, isn't it? Whether you're gonna run or whether you're gonna have a fight. Say so again. Your brain's making that choice whether you're gonna run or whether you're gonna have a fight. Yep. Fight, flight, or freeze. That's what's happening right there and then. So you've got a cognitive shift from the prefrontal lobe, neocortex, to limbic system and reptilian brain. Okay? When you go reptilian brain, you're not you're no longer able to make cognitive decisions. You're left with the intelligence of a dog like Lee Morrison says, which is one of my pair, uh, somebody that I look up to, somebody that actually taught me all that stuff first, okay? But, so this is what's happening in your brain, cognitive shift, okay? You could have also other factors depending on what type of person you are, you could have uncontrolled shaking of the limbs, you could get really pale because the blood has left your extremities, yeah? That sort of thing. I have experienced that on many occasions when yep. you're in a about the situation, uh, you've dealt with the situation, uh, and it's only afterwards when you start thinking maybe what could have happened or something like that, yeah. and your leg mm. is uncontrollably yeah. shaking. Uh, and, and it's nothing to be ashamed of. No, no it's a natural it's reaction. The, 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 the natural reaction to uh, what you've just been through, yeah. um, you know, after dealing with uh, what you've had to deal with. The other stuff as well, you know, like uh, after this happens, everybody's gone for a pace. That sort of thing, release yeah. release everything that you don't need. And some people go for a shit, some people well, go for a It can't just come out while you're fighting, can it? No. Sort of, you know, right? But sometimes it does. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> you get certain people who will just let go while they're fighting. Yep. Yeah. Because yeah. they can't hold it in. And that, that is a normal reaction, okay? Because uh, remember back in the days when we were cavemen and we yeah. used to run from the saber tooth. We used oh, to fucking shit and just oh, yeah, it, let the weight. Back in the day, yeah. Let the weight evacuate all the waste in order to run faster. Yeah? Excuse my French, I've seen him looking at me when I swear, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so um, condition red, okay, this is where we are at. We're losing cognitive functions and now we're left with mainly gross motor skills, okay? Which is why when you train to fight, you only use gross motor skills because all the complex fine motor skills have gone out the window, okay? That's why all that kung fu shit doesn't work. Um, now, condition grey, okay, condition grey has been added later on, okay, 
And uh, condition gray is basically when you know the adrenaline, because you've experienced it for a long time, you're dealing with a potentially life-threatening situation, level 10, okay, so deadly force is being offered to you, you know that your life is in danger, yeah, so obviously your heart rate goes above 145 to 175 beats per minute. But if you know the effect of adrenaline and you know yourself, yeah, you will retain some of your cognitive functions and therefore you will retain some of your motor functions. Okay? So this is for soldiers. This is for people that are used at training to be to be shot at and uh, then the grenades are fucking blowing everywhere. Sorry, I'm swearing again. The grenades are blowing everywhere, uh, but they still retain cognitive functions. Yeah. So they know their adrenaline. They know as well how to deal with fear. Can somebody uh, explain to me what fear is? Anyone? It's just your body's reaction to a situation. No. No, that's not what fear is. Uh, if, if you want, if you want guys, go on Google, Google fear. Somebody wants to do it? I'll give you a, I'll give you a few acronym, okay, for fear that I really like to use, okay? Fear is fear everything and run, or face everything and rise, okay? Oh, Ian Brown. <laughs> huh? Ian Brown. <laughs> yeah. Ian Brown's got a song called fear. Oh yeah, all okay. The way through it, it's just F E A R all the way yeah. through the song. Ah, so so he's yeah. he's giving acronym. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have a look at that. You to, you've done yeah. to use about to leave the song. All right, <laughs> you see. So fear can only exist in your thoughts of the future. Fear is basically a, a, a mental. The unknown. So yeah, it's yeah. the fear of the unknown. It's a, it's an uh, anticipation of the unknown future. It's got nothing to do with adrenaline. A lot of people mistake the two. They say that fear is a, is a is a physiological response. No, adrenaline is a physiological response, but fear is now. Fear can only exist in the mind. Fear is a choice. Yeah? the acknowledgement. Uh, fear is the acknowledgement of danger. That's what it is. But it's not. It's not adrenaline. Adrenaline is what your body does because of the acknowledgement of danger. Yeah. So fear needs to be controlled. Fear is definitely something that needs to be controlled. Okay, if you want to be proficient, if you want to be able to be there, which is called great, with your heart rate going 145 to 175 beats per minute, but still retain your cognitive functions. Well, okay. it's like the, the hero and the coward. The hero and the coward both have the fear. Mm -hmm. It's just that the hero controls the fear better than the coward. Mm -hmm. And that's why he ends up being a hero. But they still exactly have, they still have exactly the same feelings running through the body. Yep. It's like uh, you know the difference between sociopath and psychopath. Apparently, you know, psychopath their brain is wired differently. Their amygdala is smaller. They don't react the same to pain. They don't react the same to danger. And they don't react the same to seeing people being hurt. To anything. Yeah. yeah to anything. The same to anything from normal people. And that's why the best soldiers, the people that are working, you know, the the people that. They really like to hire in the army. Most of them are got psychopathic tendencies, and in the politics as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll. Uh, is he gone to the toilet? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. No worries. What we're going to do is I'm going to continue with Cod Grey while he's there, and uh, when he comes back, we're going to go on to Cod Black. So, Cod Grey, how do you really deal with your adrenaline? Okay. The best way to deal with adrenaline is being exposed to adrenaline. So the best way to be exposed to adrenaline is you can choose a, a work that expose you, gets you exposed to adrenaline constantly. So working in security, in busy environments, working the doors, working as a police officer, being a soldier, all that sort of thing. Yeah? That will desensitize you to, to adrenaline so that you start knowing what it is. It's your own. Adrenaline doesn't happen to you. It's something made by you. So you need to want it and you need to learn how to use it. Welcome back. So, now we're moving on to... So, just to continue, yeah? The guys are running after me. I'm in the streets, <coughs> yeah? And I'm running from them. My goal is to get to my car as fast as possible. Or my goal, if I'm not parked close enough, 
is if I know anyone that lives nearby, I want maybe to ring their bell and get in as soon as possible so that I'm safe, okay? If I don't have any of these options, do I have anything around me? Or do I live in a country where I can legally carry a weapon? Can I access it so that I'm ready? If not, if I'm in the UK, for example, is there anything on my persona that I can improvise as a weapon? Keys. Keys, there are a lot of different stuff. Pen, Pen keys, yeah, you've got different families of uh, categories of weapons of opportunity. You got projectiles, you got impact weapon, you got flexible weapon, you got flexible impact weapon, you got shields, you got environmental weapon, and you got tissue damaging weapons. So you, you you know once you understand all this, then you can you know you could put a decent sized padlock inside a beanie hat, and you got a console oh, yeah. inside it. Could break a window, take your shirt off, and wrap your shirt around the bigger piece of glass, and you got a blade. Or you could. Find half a brick, take your shirt off, put the half a brick inside and wrap it around and you got a cost. That, that sort of thing, it's military. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that sort of thing, okay? I mean, this is my, this is my, my environment, this is my sphere, this is where I teach, so don't, don't be shocked now. Don't use that at work on the doors, you know? <laughs> but you're running from these guys and now you're thinking what you have in terms of options. What can I do? If I'm parked enough, can I get to my car fast enough? Can I lock the door and drive off? run the, the guy over if, if need be, worst case scenario, yeah. So, condition gray is me. While I'm running, I'm breathing. I'm using tactical breathing in order to keep my heart rate to a certain level so that I don't lose my cognitive functions and my, uh, my motor functions, yeah. So this is what code gray is. Now, for some people, and for a lot of people actually, what we're going to look at is condition black. As you can see, condition black is over 175 beats per minute. It could even be over 200 beats per minute. For some people, it happens in a fraction of a second. For some people, they could be called white, texting on their phone, listening to their music, and then all of a sudden, somebody's got a knife to their throat, and, and in a fraction of a second, their heartbeat goes to 200, over 200 beats per, per minute. Yeah? So it, that's how quick it could happen. Yeah? So condition black is complete, complete mental, emotional, psychological, and physical breakdown. You can't do anything anymore. Okay. What's happening is that you know you, you, you weren't aware. You're not combative in your head. You're not ready to do what's necessary. Okay. And you get into that sort of condition. Now, what's the best way to avoid being in this condition? Condition black. Tell you what it is breathing tactical breathing learn to <coughs> breathe from you know diaphragmatic <coughs> breathing learn, learn to breathe properly in order to lower your heart rate and avoid this sort of condition you never want to find yourself in that type of condition yeah the best way for example let's say you were caught unaware okay i'm a very uh, situationally aware person i'm scanning my environment all the time i know what's happening around me yeah but it could happen that you work in a nightclub, loud environment, and all of a sudden you got a guy right in your face, and you did <coughs> this sort of thing could happen. Okay. If uh, what's going to happen at that moment is you're going to inhale, like <gasps> yeah, and if you don't exhale, you're going to stay stuck in there. Yeah. So the secret, really, if you want to break out, if you want to use the adrenaline to your advantage, is to <coughs> is to exhale. And usually when you excel is when you, when you, you know, when you start fighting, when you start doing all these things, okay? So, this is for that, okay? Let's have a look now. What we're going to do now is I'm going to let you, I'm going to give you two minutes to make sure that you took your notes, okay? What I'm going to do, just to help you, look at this, I'm going to go back to these here, okay? For you to remember a bit what I've said about these things. I don't really need you to remember everything that I just said. I gave you a presentation here. But what I would like to know, what I would like you to know is what single word would you put on each of these conditions? If you were to use only one word for each of these conditions, what would it be? Okay. So check your, um, your, your paper. Oh, you've done it already while I did the presentation. Well, it's fine. Okay. So let me ask. Let me ask you. What 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 would uh, what would be condition white if you had to use one single word? Relaxed. No. Unaware. No. Well, yeah, unaware. It could be. Yeah. I like oblivious. I like oblivious. Yeah. Unaware is good as well. Yeah. Could uh, yellow. One word. 
scanning. Yeah, that's good, yeah. For another, maybe? Prepared. Yeah, 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 okay. Aware, prepared, scanning, yeah, that, that suits me, okay. Jay, condition orange, if you had to use only one word to define this uh, this condition, what would you what would you use? One word or one sentence? One word. Focus. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I would use alert. alert yeah. It's a state of alertness. Yeah. So oblivious, aware, alert. If we're going to cut red, don't. What would you if you, what would you use if you had to use a single word? to define condition red. Uh, I have a bit of senses, but uh, I don't. So it's a threat you can't ignore, you need to deal with this yeah. situation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nah, one word, particularly a statesman. Okay, engaged. Okay, engaged. This would be a, a good word for that. Now, condition gray, one word, anyone? I just put self-aware, right? Yeah, uh, well, yeah self-aware is good, but that's two words. If I, I like to use adrenalized. Yeah, code gray, ad adrenalized, but still, you know, still retaining your cognitive functions. And now code black, I think it's easy for anyone. Code black, one Panicked. word. Freeze. Frozen, yeah. What Panic. did you say? Panic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, there are six different colors. I would like, well, you're four of you, yeah, but I would like each one of you to explain to me in a few sentences uh, how you would use what code white, condition white is and how you would use it in everyday life and at work, for example. So give me a situation, give me a scenario. Uh, let's start with you, Don. What, well, code white? Code white. Uh, it would be normal, uh, everyday, uh, you, you, you would be in a home environment, say, somewhere where you're comfortable, somewhere where yeah. you're safe, uh, you're not on the street, you're not going out to places that you don't know, so you would be very relaxed in, uh, in, in, in your own office environment or your own home environment because you just know that there's no threats there. Okay, are you on code white when you're here in the office completely or are you on code yellow? I, I personally, I, as soon as I'm out of the house, as soon as I'm awake, I'm on code yellow. I mean, I'm in the office here, over COVID there's been nobody around, mm -hmm. so in the office I'm definitely on a white, but then you might hear somebody coming up the stairs yeah. and then right away, like I say, you, you go up and down from yellow, orange, and yeah. then down yellow again, and then maybe back down to white. Yeah, but I mean, you know, I, I'm used to being on that roller coaster of mm -hmm. alertness. Okay, so for example, when the phone rings, yeah, oh, your sign says, boom, code yellow, what's happening? It's not only about threats, it's about stuff that are happening. Your phone could be ringing, people could be coming up the stairs, you could hear a noise over there, you know, so that, that sort of thing. Uh, well done, mate. Now, Jay, code yellow. Just create some sort of scenario, some sort of situation to explain what cut yellow is and how you would use well, it. Basically, let's say when you're traveling or you're on holidays, yep. unfamiliar environment. Yep. So you're going to need to be focused, okay. be aware of your surroundings and yep. everything like that. Mm. Okay, yeah, that's that's good. That's good. Yeah, like public transport. I, I very rarely travel on the bus, but as soon as I get on the bus, oh. I'm looking at everybody oh, yeah. and where they're sat find a place for myself which is usually mm -hmm. away from other people yep. and then I'm looking at everybody who gets on that bus. Do you make sure you got a good periphery? I sit at the back of the bus sometimes yeah. or I sit what well, my favorite seat in the bus is on the, the side <coughs> so that I have a good periphery. I just have to look here to look at the back of the bus and I just have to look here to, to see who's coming. I'm close to the exit there's nobody behind me you know so I've got a good periphery it's a good it's a good space for me side side seats on the bus yeah so that's called yellow. Like you said, when I if I travel to another country, I'm even called yellow alpha. I'm really, especially the big places like markets and, and airports and stuff like that. I'm really scanning. You know? Well, well done, mate. Uh, rather slow. Code orange. How would you how would you define the code orange and how would you use it? Code orange. Uh, finally. 
identify the threat. Yeah, yeah. And uh, started designing what we was to do with. How thinking how to sort it out. Yeah. So, can you give me an example? Uh, uh, yeah, one example is about that three guys on bus stop uh, drinking alcohol. Yeah. yeah. And for example, here in the UK, it's very usual threat from a fighter dog. Yeah. You know, we're going on the street and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this think, think, the, think of the boxing when we did the boxing and we had yeah. to manage the crowd. Think of the situation there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lots of people there where we had to manage. So what happened? Yeah, that's something yeah. that happened to you. So use it. Yeah, yeah use yeah. it. The real situation. Yeah. Now, oh, Jesus, that, that dog's after me. And oh. <laughs> what's to do with him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you were starting start running. Yeah, start you were faking yeah, already. Yeah, he says that wasn't yeah. condition yeah. yellow anymore. You weren't called orange. Condition yeah. orange. Yeah. Okay, uh, Pete. If I ask you to explain to me what code red, condition red is, and how you would use it. Um, code red, basically, you're already in the situation. Yeah. So, you have to kind of like use your dynamic. Just your assessment, uh, yeah. Yeah. Just to handle the situation. When I was working in Stockport, me and my partner, who was on, we was on something called a bid, and was just walking around in the six and a half. Yeah, yeah. And we got attacked by, I must have about two teenagers. And that would, it was just May for about 15 minutes. Mm. You had to, had to buy our way out of a bunch of kids, basically. Because mm. he wasn't going to let us go. Oh, you okay. go Andy, don't you? Andy, hey. big, Andy. Oh, yeah, yeah. He got, this girl on this, the guy she brought his arms and kebab, she was biting him and everything. Yeah, but I mean, you see, the thing is, though, it's all right when people go to court and they're 14 years of age in the court mm -hmm. in the school uniform. We well, have the police ringing him when, saying that. But when you're on the street, uh, you know, 20, 20 years of age. Yeah, the police ringing him on this saying, uh, she's a vulnerable child, we don't want you to press charges. He said, look, you want me to put her in the river. <laughs> but um, yeah, just have to handle it as it comes, basically. Yep. You don't get time to think. There's no, it's no, no possible thought happening because you're out of your cognitive yeah. cognitive brain. Okay, so you return back to your animal basis, really. Yeah. You fight. Mm -hmm. That's what you fight. Fight, fight. Yeah. Yeah. You've got it. I mean, the thing is, you, you need to have all the knowledge as well because if you've got knowledge of the law, uh, some people might think, because that's a, a young person, uh, I can't actually maybe strike or lash out at them. Uh, mm -hmm. So that might hold them back where they get injured or even oh, yeah. killed. But I'm if you do, the if fact you do I'm know the law, to myself, so. well, no, you can self defence yeah. even against the child. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's why I did that now, I had to. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. So now, if I go back, let's go back to Dom, okay? Code Grey. What would be Code Grey? I'm sure you have been on Code Grey before. Oh, no, I forget what Code Grey is. <laughs> code Grey is adrenalised. Knowing your adrenaline, knowing your adrenaline so well that you retain your cognitive function and your motor functions. You mean it's, the, the fight or flight's already? Going. It's already, yeah, it's yeah, already yeah, happening. Yeah. Uh, That's your situation. Mm. Yeah, go on. I mean, uh, we've done for a long time, so we had two people uh, that were fighting <laughs> in the in, in the in the bar. Uh, they were quite well known people in the uh, on the street circuit uh, we had to separate them so we did separate them and we we throw we threw both out yeah. uh, we then uh, i then told the manager that i need all the exits closing oh. uh, and they didn't want to do that because obviously we've got people in the bar but i did explain to them that you know they might come back and i don't need them getting access mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. venue so we closed all the doors and put a guy on each <coughs> door and then i went to the front door then and the guy, he only lived uh, not far away. A minute, minutes had evolved, but he'd come back with an axe mm. and he just ran up the, uh, the stairs then. Uh, so obviously the adrenaline is, is going through my body. I'm trying to uh, calm him down. He's then trying to smash the windows with the axe. Mm. Um, and then I'm in a fight situation. Uh, and again, you don't think about it because you do it you know, forever. You're doing it all the time. You, you are dealing with it, and it was only afterwards, again, when everyone's okay, uh, that, that you have this <coughs> bit of a, an Elvis Presley thing with your leg, uh, <laughs> with, with the adrenaline rushing through yeah. your body, and, and you're thinking about what might have happened, you know, or, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Is that what you mean? Yeah. So basically, even though you were adrenalized, 
You were still able to make tactical decisions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was making decisions. I knew exactly uh, what I needed to do. I knew the guys uh, past history. Uh, I knew what possibly the outcomes could be. Yeah. Whereas maybe other people working in a security position might have just thought that was the end of it and they wouldn't mm -hmm. have been prepared. Mm -hmm. I knew something mm -hmm. possibly was, was going to happen. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I was able to speak to people. I was able to speak to the guy, persuade him. I got the axe mm -hmm. off him in the end. Mm -hmm. uh, and I could do that because I, I had control of my functions as well. Yeah. Even though, you know, you, you've got this uh, chemical rushing through your body. Yeah. So this this is called great. <clears throat> Everything is happening. You know, you got the adrenaline dump. Yeah. But you're still able to make tactical decisions. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> got black, Jay. I've never been in one situation so. I yeah. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Can't really say. But obviously, if you're in a situation where you have no idea what's going on, you don't freeze it. Yeah, you don't freeze it. Like, mm -hmm. take the Manchester bombing that happened a couple yeah. of years back. That would have been a situation where someone could have been in cold black. <coughs> yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. a situation you're <coughs> familiar with, and something of that magnitude going on around them. Mm -hmm. no. You're not yeah. trained, you're not versed to know what it is exactly you're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. for sure that that night did freeze. No, no they did. I mean, I, I've had the experience of people I've been working with <coughs> who have who gone into cold blacks because uh, we was involved in a shooting incident and the guys that I was with, who I thought would have supported me, oh, yeah. just, Chicken that, yeah. just went into cold black. Yeah. And I was trying to deal with everything. And, you know, it, but at the end of the day, you don't know how people react with situations because yeah. you don't get shootings all the time. You don't get a bombing all the time. You could put them in that situation again and you wouldn't react like that. Yeah. It's the first time you've been in that situation. It's just <coughs> glasses, it? This is one of the things, eh? I must be brilliant because I'm... <laughs> 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 I don't know if I've been called black that's, <laughs> that's why in, in training, in self-protection training, this is why if you want to be efficient with your self-protection training, you have to you have to simulate that adrenal dump, that adrenal response. So there are a lot of different ways to do that. I'm not going to get into it today because we're really talking about that stuff and we're on schedule. So. But, but then the thing is, though, I mean, I, I, I box, so I've had 35 fights, yeah. so I've controlled the adrenaline anyway. And I've controlled the way I feel for them competitions. Yeah. So then when you transfer that into a working, a sort of like environment situation, it, it's probably, for me, a bit <coughs> easily transferable. Yeah, so yeah. yeah the ring, ring fighting helps a lot. I know, I know that it helps me as well. Okay, let's carry on now with the part two. So we're halfway through the thing. Part two, we're gonna have a look at Colonel John Boyd's Udalu, which is a module for decision making. Okay? I'll let you have a quick look. <coughs> okay? So this is another representation of the Udalu. Okay? So uh, John Boyd was in the US Air Force, and this is, like I said, a module that was uh, designed to make split decision for, for uh, jet fighters, so plane pilots, yeah? What's the, the meaning of, oh, well, you're probably going to go through it. I'm going to go, I'm gonna go through it, I'm going to go through it. So you can take the notes. So. The UDA loop is a constant loop of observation, orientation, decision, and action based on your environmental factors. So the environmental map is what we're talking about today as well. Being aware, being able to read your environmental map. Okay? So the first O of the UDA loop stands for <coughs> observation. So observation is a major part of your work, guys, isn't it? You're always observing. Yeah. If you're good at observing, if you've got good observational skills, you're going to be able to spot pre-threat indicators before it's happening. So you're going to be able to spot a potentially dangerous individual or subject before they get in your personal space. Yeah? And that's the, that's the thing about having good observations, yeah? observational skills. That is the first thing. So I'll give you an example now. Okay. I am walking in the street and I'm just looking, I'm aware, I'm looking at stuff that's happening around me and I can hear a bird flying in the sky 
And I'm using my senses, okay? I'm not texting in my phone, I'm not using headphones, I'm not listening to music when I'm on the street so that I can use all my senses. And I can hear a, I can hear a bird in the, in the sky, yeah? So what do I do? I was observing my, my, my surroundings, yeah? When I heard something, I had a cue, some sort, it was an auditory cue, okay? And what did I do at that moment? I orientate my attention towards the source of agitation, towards the noise. I heard the noise that made me look up. What is this? Oh, that's a bird. Yeah? So from observation, I went to orientation. I went to orientate my attention towards the source of agitation. Yeah? Now from there, I'm going to gather enough information, enough intel, in order to determine whether what I've seen, what I'm looking at is a threat or not. Okay, so I want to make sure it's not a threat. In order to make a decision, and that's what the decision stands for, okay? I was observing, I've heard something, I oriented my attention towards the source of agitation, and now I'm gathering information in order to make a decision. Yeah? Now, in function of the information that I gather, to take the example of the bird, it was just a bird, so what do I do? I make a decision. The, the decision that I make is, I realize that it's not a threat to me, so what do I do? I act upon my decision. And what is this action? Acting upon the decision is the action to go back to observation. Okay? The first one. So it's a constant loop, as you can see, okay? I'll give you the example of the bird here. Where I was walking, I was observing my environment. I heard some noise, so I orientated my attention towards the source of agitation. I gathered information in order to make a decision, determine whether it's a threat or not. I saw that it was only a bird, so I acted upon the decision, and my action was to go back to my observation, okay? So that is in case uh, it, it was just a bird. It was no threat. Now if we reverse that into another type of scenario, yeah? Well, watch this. Um, oh, you can jump yeah, there. Yeah. So, <clears throat> let's say now that I'm walking and I'm observing my environment and I see, I see a guy walking and I'm looking at the way that he's dressed. I'm looking, I'm trying to gather as much information about the person before they get in my personal space. So I'm looking at the way that he's dressed from far away, I'm looking at the way that he's walking, his kinetic energy, does he have some sort of swagger in the way that he's walking, as he gets closer, and so now something tells me that this guy might be a potential problem, because I can sense in his, in his uh, kinetic energy that potential a sign of aggression, okay, he's walking like this, I can see different types of body language, yeah? If it was somebody that was just walking like this, hands in the pocket, walking like this, then I know he's not a threat, okay? If I'm just seeing somebody who's uh, wearing a suit and carrying a suitcase, just walking nice and straight like that, I know he's not a threat, yeah? If I see somebody wearing big bombers and army trousers, skinhead, and walking like this, and looking at everybody, I know already that he's a potential threat, okay? Because he's giving me a uh, potentially aggressive uh, body language, okay? So what do I do at that moment? I orient my attention towards him and now I start gathering even more information about the person before he gets to my personal space in order to determine whether or not he's a threat. So I look at, now what could I see from, uh, from far away? I couldn't see much, I could only see his kinetic energy, his energy, his, uh, the way that he's dressed. As he gets closer, I can already see the eyes, facial expression, eye contact, what are his eyes saying? Is he smiling? Does he look happy? Or is he throning? Does he look pissed off? Um, as he gets closer, it's really the body language, okay? Facial expression, all that stuff. And as he gets even closer, if I didn't make my decision yet, because I'm still gathering information, okay? As he gets closer, where he's in a distance, what I call the, the verbal communication distance, where he can start talking to me. And if he does talk to me, what is he saying? What language is he using? Remember, body language is, what is it? It's 55% body language, 38% auditory cues, and only 7% words, yeah? So what is all this saying? 
You know, all the information that I'm gathering, what is it saying? Yeah. So I'm going to make a decision. If really I decide that, right, okay, the guy's not a threat. Maybe he looked a bit pissed off, but he's not looking in my general direction. He's probably looking over there. He wants to go somewhere. I might just leave a little gap when he passed next to me and still make sure that, you know, look at the hands, what the hands are doing. And I keep going my way. Yeah. So what did I do here? I observed. I oriented my attention because his body language was a bit alarming. And I and wanted to make sure. some more. And I observed some more, yeah. So I observed, oriented, I made the decision to observe more and I acted upon that decision and I observed more. And then again, I orientated, uh, you know, towards now next thing, the eye contact and this and that. And I made a decision, is he a threat? No. So I acted upon that decision and went back to observation. Your brain does that on its own all the time. Yeah. Okay, unconsciously. But if you bring that to conscious knowledge, you got your own to something, yeah? So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna ask you Pete, observation, give me an example, just the same way that I did, but use your own, use your own example that you wanna use. So, if I worked on an entertainment complex in Stockport, mm -hmm. and you get to know the draw causes, mm -hmm. you can see them up, you can spot them a mile off, and all you do is just watch them, mm -hmm. right? and then you decide whether you want them on your property or not, and if you don't, yep. see you later mate. If you do, crack on stuff. Okay. You just have to keep an eye on certain people, that's all it is. Okay, okay. 99% of the general population are good as gold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. You got, you know, you, like I said, you got different types of people. You got the sociopath and you got people with psychopathic tendencies. You know, a sociopath is a good guy having a bad day. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, you can talk, talk things out. I've had to deal with suicide attempts and everything while I was working on mm -hmm. it. It is at every level of weirded people you can get. <laughs> yeah. You get them, yeah. You but they all live in Stockport, so mm -hmm. kind of laughing on that. You live in Stockport? No, they all live in Stockport. Oh, right, okay, yeah. No wonder they're all trying to throw each other off edges. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I live in Stockport, <laughs> yeah. I live in Brunington. <laughs> 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 so I'll be doing All right. <laughs> I live in the, in the best part of Brunington. <laughs> Radoslav, how could you explain to me what orientation is? Oh, orientation. Within within the context of the UDL. Oh, yeah, orientation. So, for, for example, I hear a car is coming. So exactly, I am turning my attention exactly yeah. at that car, mm -hmm. identifying what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Etc. Yeah. 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 Any. At that point, anything yeah. could happen after you yeah, make yeah, a decision, yeah. yeah? Okay, good, good. I'm happy with that. Jay, <coughs> decision in the context of the UDA loop. Can you explain yeah, it? What is the decision? Basically, he said, like, um, you're making a decision based on the information you've gathered. Yeah. From whatever potential threat. From what's happening around you, yeah, yeah, yeah from your environment. That's happening. What type of decision is going to be mm -hmm. that needs to be made, depending on the level of threat it is. Whether, whether you need to go back and observe or do your orientation again or whether you need to act based on your decision. Okay, good. Dom, action. Oh, sorry. Uh, the action, uh, if you take the action speeding car analogy, uh, you're about to cross the road, you hear a speeding car uh, fast approaching, so that's your orientation. Mm -hmm. uh, Based on the fact that you've heard the car, seen the car, and it's heading towards you, the action that you take would be either get back onto the uh, pavement or run quickly across the other side of the road mm -hmm. to get yourself out of the way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So